Warning, the following is for entertainment purposes only. The statements contained herein are the ramblings of charlatans and madmen. The opinions expressed are our own and do not represent endorsements by any corporation or government entity. Furthermore, nothing said here should be construed as financial advice. Plainly put, if you're coming to Broken Arrow Live from the Bar to explore life's divine mysteries, you really need to see a highbrow and get your gulliver sorted. Stay Irie, man. Select, uh... I'm good. Booyakasha. Yeah, Mic check, one, two, three. And... We look we good right there. Have a good time. Here we go, here we go. Here we go. Welcome, 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 welcome to episode three of... Podcast called the gun. Broken <laughs> Arrow. Broken Arrow live. <laughs> Broken Arrow podcast live from the bar. Episode three. And uh, today, my name is Matt. This is my I'm colleague, <clears throat> Frank. Frank Andrews. Uh, and we are here at Bar Blue Lagoon in Mihama Chatan. And we are in a bit of a celebratory mood. Uh, my birthday was a few days ago. Um, and so I was, it was during the week and I was working. So this is more of a, a celebratory Broken Arrow podcast. Um, Turn 41, how do you feel? Fucking old. It's depressing. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's terrible. I don't know. Like, I just... My life is more than probably halfway over. And that's a very fucking sobering thought. Mm. Yeah, I just... Try not to think about it. I just it never just, think about stuff like that. Yeah, I just I always... Even, I'm always like, no, nah, I'm going to live to be 120. That's my yeah. motto. I, I just feel like I cannot be killed. But then, I love it's like, it. but then on a day like your birthday when you turn 41, you're like, fuck, next year I'm going to be 42. And then like, before you know it, you'll be like 53 and you'll be like, god damn it. Nah, what the fuck is going on? We're, so what, we're, what, we're doing what, great. What happens when you reach the hill? You steer at the top and then you see what? And that is the voice of our dear yeah, bartender and say. owner. Yeah, this introduce. is the proprietor of this good establishment, Bar Blue Lagoon, Wayne, Wayne son. Uh, He's like Cher, he only has one name. That's it. That's all you need to know. But you should come visit this bar if you ever get the chance. Perhaps you will be on the podcast, or you will get to drink with this upstanding gentleman right here. Absolutely. Yeah. As we have many times. So I have a little bit of a present surprise Uh for the bar and for for us. The birthday boy has a surprise for us? How is this a thing? So I bought a pirate game for the bar. (laughs) And I don't know, Frank. Do you are you familiar with this game? Uh, probably no. It's in Japanese. I'm not. All right. So it's a ja- looks like a Japanese bar pirate the game. Games unfold. It's like a game for children, but <clears throat> I've turned it, and many people have. It's not I'm not the only one, but when adults drink, they turn into children. Well, basically, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do it the the adult version. <laughs> so. All right. The unpackaging. And then what I'm going to do, Wayne, is I'm going to leave this for you, man. It's a gift. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, this is the kind of game. This is the kind of game that a lot of a lot of people like to play when they're drinking. It's really fun. So we got to pull these swords off. Yeah. Okay. So you have played this, but it's oh, I've owned brand these. new. I've owned yeah. these for years. Okay. I love this freaking game. It's games. Huge, huge right, money so maker. Can, if you can make a game that oh, people God. love, yeah, it looks interesting. So we'll, we'll see what, let's see what it comes out to. All right. So um, we can get started. And then basically what I was thinking was, is what we'll do is we will play. After every topic, you got to stick a sword in the barrel. Okay. And... If the pirate pops, you have to drink a shot. <laughs> and Wayne, you can get in on this too. Well, I'm all about it. Yeah. Arr. So this looks like a uh, saver. So what you They're do all is made out of swords. You put the pirate in. We create, so we're going to put the pirate in here. Yep. And then what you do is put the pirate in here. Okay. Yeah. Push he's, him down. He's in the barrel. He's down, and then. Ah. Uh, and, and eventually you, he's going to pop and, out. Okay. And when he pops out, you got to drink. But it could be random? So this is sort of for you. Yep. For every pirate so, game, Okay, so it's is. made out of... Jesus Christ. 
Christ. For, I wasn't planning that, but all right. Dude, hold up. Is this uh <laughs> Do you have a... Is that spice? Is this rum? Yeah. Is that the spice rum? Yeah, spice rum. Oh, that's gold, though. Do you have the non-gold? <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, I uh, see it. I see oh, it. Sailors. Yeah, that's perfect. Cool. I like the. Oh, that looks like a nice. Yeah, it's like a serious bottle right yeah, there. That's nice. Okay, so what it is right, is so we got some sailor we've jerry. Got, we've got we've got the five game. different colors. It does the color doesn't matter. You just pick up a sword and shove it in there. Okay. But uh, yeah, so if it pops, you drink. You so should we? Shot. Should we put her like right there? And I would be remiss if I did not. Uh, Give a plug to my friend Wayne. He's got a business here. It's called uh, Oaky Blue um, CBD. And, uh, it's going to be out of focus if you t- put it too close. Yeah, but. it's a CBD uh, oil that you put in a vape pen and smoke. And, uh, like, you know, it's not for military people or, like, most Americans that are here. You'd run afoul of your job. Uh, but it is legal. No, it's legal. So, no sofa. Yeah, no sofa. But it is legal in, you know, most places, Japan, America. But it's not, if you're in the military, you can't do it, so. Third party tested. Yep. In Germany. <clears throat> EU standards, medical grade. Yep. Okay. So, uh, all right. please support your local your local businesses. So, all right, so, we got two swords so we, in. We can't, really, uh, we can't really see it, but I think my mic's in the way, but maybe we could now. Nah. Yeah, we'll, we'll pick it up when we, when we do it. All right, but cool. I mean, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, we'll just. Let's uh, put it right there, then. We'll jump right in. So, uh, how are you? So, we were talking about this. This is what I wanted to lead off with. So, you were just home for a month, and you just got back. You've been back a little bit now. Yeah. But we were talking about the difference between going to the States, the people there, that the way they act, and then the people oh, in yeah. Japan. And it's kind of a sobering thing. So, yeah. why don't you tell us about your experience there? And like, Well, I think my opinion is, I think my opinion is a, a lot like many, you know, Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps who have been uh, in Japan and, well, overseas for that matter, but particularly Japan. Um, and then it's just, it's a, I would say, um, it's as about a, it's, it's as about of a 180 as you could possibly get in terms of, um, you know, like just socially. So, you know, obviously everybody knows this. Uh, Japan is, got its own thing going uh there's there's good things there's maybe not so good things but one of the things is is that um when you go out when you go out on the street or like no matter what day of the week if you're if it's early in the morning or late at night uh you you know like here it's it's just basically peaceful right and there could be times where you could be having a bad day you could go out like people aren't angry uh, you could go out, or you could get drunk in the middle of the night in the nightlife and walk home and maybe have a bad night. And I've seen, I've witnessed this, you know, we've been in Japan for a long time and witnessed. This. Yeah. I mean, you could, I've seen Japanese guys, I've seen foreigners get really, really drunk in the street. Nobody, pay, nobody bothers them. They sort of let them do their thing. And I was like thinking, I'm like, you know, I've lived in four different states in the U S and that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy would have been assaulted in any major or city robbed. in the and United people States. People pass out on benches. On yeah, the street. I mean, it, you yeah. know, like you can't really like you can't really be on one in the states. Yeah, because it's dangerous. Right. But here in J- Japan, if you want to go out and be on one, if you have an off day or an off night, like you're going to live through it. You're not going to get, and you're probably not going to go to jail. I mean, like you were saying earlier, as long as you don't steal something something or break into something something because then you will be be they will you will very much find you um so like yeah i mean it's just you know i I go back to san diego i absolutely love being in san diego i live in downtown san diego i have a a a house there so and i was telling i was saying it's like you know after about a week no after about two weeks of being back and just moving through the city and it's like i was telling you there's a whole nother level of Let's call it uh, malevolent malevolence mm. to it, mm. right? There's um, and you can sense it, you can see it, you can hear it, mm. and so you're a lot more people in general. And and this is really important when it comes to frame of reference. If you've never lived outside of the country, you uh, you learn a lot more about your country when you leave your country. I've always said that. 
Man, I, I think you I think you cheated because you picked it up and No, nah, you didn't put the sword in all the way. Uh, about I countries. think I did. I think no, it's mal- I think it malfunctioned. I but. pushed it in because it was sticking out. It was That's like right. that. There's a thousand different slots I could have put it in. Yep. Went, okay. That's the one. Talk about countries. So, Reverse yeah, there's just a whole shot. other level of, you know, yeah. uh, anger and, and stuff like that. And then you come back here, and then it's it's not like that again, anymore. Well, we were but that doesn't about, mean that I don't like living in the States. I absolutely love that? living in San Diego yeah. for so many reasons. But it's night and day in terms of, right. like, when I walk down the street in, San Di- in downtown San Diego, after about two weeks, I'm on edge. I'm a little bit angry. Yeah. And People then, are bitter. Right, I yeah. come back here and oh, there's none of that. Right. So environments matter. That's yeah. the the key Completely. takeaway. Well, I, I was telling him a story, um, and this, this to me sums up everything. Last time I went home, uh, before last year, uh, it was the time before that, and I was in the car with my mother and <laughs> my wife and kids, and uh, I think my sister. Um, no, my sister wasn't there. But anyway, we're driving, and I'm, I'm going around a curve, and it merges into another like lane. But I stopped and let the traffic flow, which you're supposed to do. Like mm-hmm. I drove perfectly. It wasn't like I didn't just c- cut right in and just be a jerk. Mm-hmm. So I come to a stop, right? And I see this car going around, and <laughs> this bony little, like, she looked like, like a trailer park chick, like, it looked like she was on heroin or something. She was just like sunken cheeks and just real gross looking, Walking greasy zombie. hair. Yeah. She drives along and she just goes, she looks over and she just goes. <laughs> and I was like stunned. And all I could do was laugh because it was the funniest freaking thing I've ever. It's like <laughs> it is, this little wet dog. It's pretty funny. It's like flicked me off for no reason at all. Mm-hmm. And I was just like. Welcome to Massachusetts, dude. Or, or welcome, wel- welcome to any major American right. city. Like, yeah. It's, and what what the hell is that all about? And I would even so far go so far as to say is welcome to the West. Right. Right. You know, like well, well, wherever yeah. the you, West you is. See that, yeah. Maybe that. Stuff, I could but, see that happening in Australia. Yeah. You know, places like Sydney, UK. Yeah. Like, what's going on? Times haven't changed. <clears throat> That's the real question is, well, like, I what's think, going on? Like, how do you, what's, what's the metric there? Well, what's I the think, commonality? I think, uh, I think a lot of people are more desperate than ever. I think uh, because we've seen um, cost of living rise, but wages have remained stagnant since, like, the 70s. Mm-hmm. And Virgil. a lot of people are desperate. And so, you know, like, there's... There's an open air drug market in Boston. So this week I was looking at the local San Diego news, too, but we never had that before. Like, and so I was looking at the news this week, and this is another story we can talk about just briefly. But there was uh, made news all over the city because apparently there's this. Oh yeah, I should talk into the mic. There's this. Uh, <clears throat> there's like an open, and I saw it the last time I was home. I used to deliver newspapers for the Boston Globe when I was like an intern there after college mm-hmm. and I would drive along this road in the city where all the best hospitals in the world are so like Mass General mm-hmm. Brigham and Women's these are the top hospitals on the planet uh, it's where all the cancer research is done and mm-hmm. uh, like they're amazing but right in front of them is just like junky heaven Like it's mm-hmm. just like open air drug market tents craziness people I like I was driving there last time saw someone just lying in the street probably dead and there's cop cars right there i mean like they just can't do anything because there's so many of them Mm, and uh, i think they just clear out the dead people when they (laughs) overdose but so so basically just to to wrap that up real quick like then we can discuss it but there was a apparently that i I looked for the video because i really wanted to see it just because i like i have to see shit like this but there was a apparently a sex act performed right out in front of everyone on the street in broad daylight, and sponsored by fentanyl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I wanted to know what sex act. Yes. Like, you know, I'm sure I don't want to see these two wonderful, upstanding citizens of what they were doing, mm. but I'm sure it was really, uh, you know, get you going. But I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to know what was going, like what, like what were the circumstances, and I couldn't find it. But mm-hmm. uh, apparently, that was happening, and the, the, like, you know. It's in front of like two of the biggest hospitals in the world. Like kids are, are there, you know. It's like people are driving by. It's a main road. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's, it's insane. Like I've never seen that in my city. 
And now it's like everywhere. Every so, like you said, every city has them. Yeah. Uh, every answer. Western city, mm-hmm. and there's the there's the metric. Right. Yeah. So the contrast is very dry, black and white. You got a Rolls Royce driving by with a guy smoking a cigar, and he's ashing on a homeless dude as he drives by. This is the voice of God, people. By the way, you can't see him, but this yeah. is the voice of God. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us, God. We have access yes. here. Yeah. We need a third party. Amen. Oh, I gotta figure out what that means for the rest of the week. Yeah. We need a third party. <laughs> that was epic. All right, all right, pirate time. Wayne, uh, our voice of God. May I? Yeah, God. God. May, I, may I insert and not pop? Okay. You didn't stick it in all the way. Oh, that's what you put. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There you go. Uh, see what happened last time. That's weird how it. I got. I was the one. Yep, you were the one. Yeah. So I mean, well, you didn't take a shot. You got to take a shot. Let's, let's start. Let's start over. Let's start over. Okay, fine. Starting <laughs> now. <laughs> it might, it might. So basically, I don't know. I, I think there's societal factors that contribute to the situation and people's moods and anger. Oh but yeah. You, it's definitely you can. I mean, I go home and I'm like, I I don't want to live here anymore. <laughs> like, people are rude and mm. mean and just like salty as shit. Mm. And you know, Americans at heart are really good people. Yeah. You know, like when there's a disaster, you'll see people like donate blankets or like you know they really come together and they americans are at heart really awesome kind mm. generous people i think not just americans just globally speaking but americans are, americans are, are they always human, come human, through they're like they yeah. have yeah their, yeah i'm not saying other cultures don't, aren't nice i'm just saying like americans like you, you we're known for that it. yeah yeah like, they, we come through for each other we come do. through for other they people do. but it's it's like what's happening there now is pretty depressing and yeah, and there's so what needs to be changed? That's yeah, a good question, God. Yeah, it's a really good I, question. I think I think there's I, some I think, obvious things. Yeah, that, I think like for like I said, first of all, uh, wages need to like keep up with the cost of living. Yeah, yeah. Either the cost of living needs to come down, <clears throat> or wages need to go up. Mm. Um, and that's a lot of that is down to corporate greed, you know. Mm. But um, there are things that our government could do. They both talk. Because these are the people who vote. These are, you know, most people are, there's really not that much of a middle class anymore. And most people are in one bracket or another. And so these are the people that vote. These are the constituents. So they both pay lip service to, you know, the population and say, oh, we care about the working man. We care about, you know, blah, blah, blah. But when it comes down to, well, when it comes down to it, what they really listen to, both parties, they listen to their corporate masters. Exactly. That's the problem. There you go. And I'll put a sword in for that. Oh, I see how we're doing it. People like are whenever selfish. you make a point, you yeah. put a sword yeah, in. Well, Got it. I'm way. on it. That's I'm even better. It. People are selfish in general, mm-hmm. and uh, they're it's whatever's conducive to their own. Okay, I so insert. Put it. Put it right here. Insert. Put it right here. No, I don't know. Or we could put it in front of us. Uh, All right. Yeah. yeah so. So I mean, that, yeah, that's interesting that you know, you so, go home and you can you can. So I want to I want to second that point. Mm. I want to second that point. I just want to keep it simple because, like, listen, I, we, you and I can talk, and, and the audience listening, they could say, "Oh yeah, but and 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 they're all valid." But mm. if I could just make two points, I want to agree with you. I think it does have to do with despair. So I think wages need to go up. I mean that the the, uh, da- the data is out there. It's like wages have stayed the same and the cost yeah. of living has gone up. Yeah. And there's something to be said about that. But I also want to say this. Yeah. I think um, s- s- we have a we have a way of just putting up with things that we shouldn't put up with. Mm. And I know it's not pretty, but it's not a nice thing to say. But I think we need to we need to like stop putting up with bullshit. Yeah. Um, Look at France. Like, you know, yeah. the, I think it was Macron tried to raise the retirement age by like one year, and they were like burning cars in the streets. And he was like, okay, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're not going to do oh, that yeah. now. You know, like, yeah. they, they don't take any shit. And that's, Americans take a lot of shit. And then they complain about it, but it's like, get out there and, and organize and do something about it. And then maybe you won't have to eat so many spoonfuls of steaming, yummy. Shit! Uh, Don't say it. Yes. Yeah, as, <laughs> as Frank said earlier, he uh, 
you don't know your own country till you Leave. visit other countries. Right. Because and you know you know what I think about that is because we all when when you're used to looking at the same things over and over again, it's like um, nothing stands out because it's normal to you. But what happens is <laughs> is when you leave your country. Yeah. What happens is, is when yeah. you leave your country, all of a sudden you're confronted with all of, with a new politics, a new environment, a new way of doing things, a new way of policing, a new way of just life. And so now it's like the veil you could see, but you don't know that you have a veil on because you've always had a veil on. Mm. So when you leave your country, I've always said you learn more about your country when you leave because all of a sudden there's all of these things that start to stick out like a sore thumb, right? It's a good blame, man. And so that's what I've learned. That- Living in Japan, Korea, Baghdad, yep. um, places like that. So uh, apparently, Bahrain, the UAE. Take my shot when I get apparently, it. I lost. Yeah. So I'm doing a shot. Yep. What's up, camera? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Dude, I mean, like, there you go, know, God. Man. Enjoy yourself. I shall. Enjoy yourself. All right. So that's. Are we done with that yeah, one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, let us know what you guys think in the comments mm. section. Be like, yeah, but Frank, yeah, but Matt, you didn't, you left this out. Let exactly. us know. Just in the comment section, there's a lot of complexity. Everybody to the issue. likes to hate. And, yeah, and well, it's gonna thing, get crazy. Like, I'll just say this: this is not gonna be a popular opinion, but like Americans love drugs. Like yeah. that's another part of it too. I mean, look at like Pablo Escobar in the '80s. Like he was able, you know, look at the the Sinaloan cartel, like. They flood the U.S. with drugs because people buy them. Mm-hmm. So I mean, simple economics, you know. Supply and yeah. demand, indeed, indeed. Um, so one thing I wanted to talk about, and we spoke about this, Frank. What's that? Was uh, the AI? Uh, it was a simulation, but apparently, so there was a an Air Force officer. A Colonel Tucker Cinco Hamilton. Oh, boy. He was speaking in London, Uh and he basically said that there was a simulation where they had an AI drone in the simulation, Mm -hmm. and the drone turned on its human operator and Mm -hmm. killed them. Mm -hmm. Because basically, from what I understand, was that the guy had ordered the drone to kill someone or attack a target, Mm -hmm. and then tried to cancel the order. So th- to accomplish the mission, mm-hmm. the drone had to take out the operator who was controlling it. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the military has denied this. Uh, so, but but so, I wanted to talk more broadly about AI in that, you know, I mean, this is Terminator. Like, this is, this is you know, this is a movie. Like, mm-hmm. we've seen this before. This is Skynet, you know? Mm-hmm. So, like, what do you think about this? And, like, what... So, so a couple of things there. So... Actually, so that's right. So what they did was, um, it was it was a simulation. So the AI drone killed the operator or killed or killed the airman. Yeah. Um, thank you. Sure. Cheers. I don't know why people do that. It's like this thing where everybody hits the the table. It's yeah, like I'm do, like I don't I don't, I don't know what that's. I mean, I could start doing it, but it's like I'm I'm good. <clears throat> I, to me, it's just it's, habit. It's the same as pouring pouring off some drinks for the homies. We've been doing it for years. So check this out. So to add to that, you better not. <laughs> to add to that, so they said okay. They re, they uh, gave it some more orders. They said hey, don't kill the operator. All right, you just you just can't kill the operator. So it's like, all right, cool. So it went on its mission and it took out the communications tower next, so that the so so that the operator could, could not tell it to not, could, to do, not yeah, kill right. the subject. That's a How brilliant operator. is that? It is. Yeah. I mean, they're, so I mean, their their knowledge is infinite, you know. But it's I, I think to me this is what the scariest part about AI is yeah. is that like we have no controls over this stuff. There's no like. Like, even with Skynet, you know, they were talking about you could shut yeah. off the system before they went rogue. But it didn't work, obviously, in Terminator. But, mm. like, I, I just, I could I see this, again. I could see this being a real thing where, like, you know, basically, maybe they don't do that. Maybe they fire a nuke that destroys the planet. Or maybe they melt down a grid which includes a nuclear plant and it just... It makes a whole country uninhabitable. Like, I, I could see this happening, and I, I just feel like 
if we're go- if AI is going to be a thing, which I obviously think it, it is, that's another prompt. We need to put some sort of way in there, mm-hmm. some sort of fail safe, a <clears throat> dead man switch or something, so to like stop it from killing us. Yeah, I mean, and I, I really hope that they do that because you know the last twenty years of movies, which we thought were all fantastically <laughs> imaginative and <laughs> fake. Are now reality, right. and it's like uh, that sucks. Kind of makes you, um, kind of makes you want to move to Mauritius, <laughs> or or Paraguay or Uruguay. Because I got this thing, man. But the, it, the drones can find you in, in Paraguay too. Uh, here's my opinion. I, I want to say this. There is gonna, no hiding now they ain't gonna find. <laughs> I want to say this. Check this out. In in some sort of world capitulating event, yeah. where I I don't know whatever like there's World War Two, there's maybe it's Armageddon, you know the Bible, uh, you know some sort of nuclear fallout, whatever whatever, in some some sort of capitulating event where world powers are fighting, there's places that you can go to where all of that could happen, and if you live there, you wouldn't even know what was going on. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the economy is completely sep- disconnected. So places like Paraguay, Uruguay, uh, there's all like there's places in South America where I'm sure if World War Three kicked off in a new horrific fashion, mm-hmm. you would just be sitting there chilling all day. Like oh, I don't even know. Let me go get some rice. I honestly store. think Okinawa is one of those places. It, it's one of those but like, dude, Okinawa, Okinawa, it, like Okinawa they, is they a big say, military base, right? Well, they say if if a war were to happen with China. That Okinawa could become a target, you know. So, so but, like that is true. But let's say that that eventuality war with China does not happen, and it's something totally different, like AI or Russia or something else. It's one of the last. O- Okinawa is far enough away from everything else, and the caves that protected the people during World War Two are still there. And you know, and I've been huge. inside. I've been inside of. They're yeah. huge. It's uh. Yeah, but you not, don't want to go back in there with a thousand people. No, you don't. But I'm just saying. Not everybody would fit, you know, like, people would die. But some people would live. The cave people. Oh, no, people will live. <laughs> the people. Cave, cave, cave people. Yeah, cave people will live. People. I, just think it's, I just think it's interesting, man. Yeah, it's really interesting. Like, for me, I, I don't, too. looking back on this, mm. looking back on this podcast in years, but, years from now, but, you know, I'm actually getting ready to leave Okinawa, and I'm, I'm looking to get a secondary citizenship because I, I mean I just really enjoy living outside of the US yeah. and uh, I've never been to South America so I'm going to be exploring that and I'm also going to be exploring Central Europe because that's a super cool place too anyways next topic what about space you want to explore space nah, no I have, definitely dude, not dude I'm in space Japan is yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm effectively space, space traveling when you go to Japan you're, you're effectively space traveling alright my next topic that I wanted to discuss I've never been in a place so unique UFOs God I like to talk to you yeah God is he's yep. a wise a wise wise old he's like he's like Frank stop talking I'm not part of the podcast I'm not part of the podcast yes you are yes you are <laughs> <laughs> he's like Wilson in Home Improvement the guy where you could never see his face. He's on the other <laughs> side of the fence. That was yeah. a good show. Yeah, it was. Only for the ones that know. I was, Man, yep. I forgot about that show. <laughs> All right, so there's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff happening this week uh, with aliens and UFOs. <clears throat> so mm. the, the alien thing that happened in Las Vegas, we'll get to that in a minute. I, you know, there's, there's really no proof there. But like, so basically, the big news that happened was there was this guy... Uh, David Grush. He's a Air Force veteran. Um, he worked for, uh, let's see, I know he had some kind of like secret clearance. Um, mm. Let's see. Well, anyway, I can't find it. But anyway, he so he worked for like some top secret department in the Department of Defense. Okay. And basically, he came out and blew the whistle. So he didn't claim to have seen any alien spacecraft or dead aliens or anything like that. But what he said was he found documents that say that the U.S. has in their possession uh, alien spacecraft and potentially, I think it was like a, like a dead pilot from one of them or something like that. Um, he hadn't seen it, but there were documents that said these things exist. And apparently this program was so dark that... 
like all programs, even the secret ones, have to they fall under the purview of Congress. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently, this one was outside of it. Uh, like Congress didn't even know it exists. Um, mm, that's so crazy. And then there was another report. Uh, I think his name is Michael Schellenberger. He's a journalist uh, who's done some good work. He has a reputation for being like legit. Uh, he came out with a report in the like two days after this came out. Mm. He said he'd been working on it for years, but he just felt now that he had enough behind him to, to put it out. Yeah, I think he had like a bunch of intelligence sources that basically backed up what this Grush guy was saying, but they said that the number of alien spacecraft in the U.S.'s possession was 12. Wow. Um, and that goes, that falls in with what. <laughs> Uh, Phil Corso had said in his book, like it was like probably 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. And then there was a guy, uh, is it Bob Lazar, I think is his name. Yeah. He So he apparently worked there and worked on, they were trying to reverse engineer mm-hmm. the spacecraft. Um, he wrote a book about it, but he, he basically blew the whistle on himself because he thought they were going to kill him. Um, who, so who was going to kill him? Bob call. Lazar. Because he basically he brought his friends to come and see the stuff. Oh, and, okay. And like, but but not. So he not thought into they the, were going to kill into them. the base. Yeah. He brought them on the territory uh. to see them flying these things because they were re- reverse engineering them. Uh, uh, awesome. And so he wanted his friends to see them fly the things. So they just drove into the desert, and of course the MPs grabbed them yeah. all. He thought they were going to kill him, so he like went to the local news. A lot of people have said he's full of baloney. Uh, mm. I, I kind of believe him. A lot of his, um, a lot of the stuff has checked out over the years. The things he said. Mm. Um, but so, so what do you guys think about this? This new development. Do you think? Uh, do you think it's true that we have aliens? Twelve alien spacecraft and dead pilots. We're reverse engineering these things. And well, yeah. I mean, if it's been verified, then I believe think it's it. A psy- but it could be a psyop. I mean, it's this one guy who's blowing the whistle. Then yeah. you have a journalist who's coming out, and he has, like, I guess, like, ten sources or five sources or whatever, but we don't know who they are. So it could be the government trying to put out misinformation. It mm-hmm. could be, I mean, we don't know. It could be know. a PSYOP. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, we don't know. But I, How I dare you think of a PSYOP? But I can't think of a good reason to put out a PSYOP, you know, to do a PSYOP on that. Well, I can really why? Why, 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 yeah. why to scare people, distract them? Yeah, to absolutely so, distraction what, uh, from what from from the yeah. net from the next from the next uh, bullshit they they want to drop off in the game. You heard me. I said Media that right. Whatever changing. the next bullshit is, whatever whatever bullshit they want to drop off in the game. Hi, Rena. Hi, guys. How are you? It's to distract for that, or or in preparation. Yeah. Hey, Rena. So, we're, doing, we're doing a podcast. How are you? Yep, you're on. Hi, <laughs> Laura. Media is always changing. People will naturally. Forget that is the other proprietor everything. of this good establishment. That is Rena. Mm-hmm. Hi, Rena. Day. Yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I I heard that it kind of goes with like like I said. I believed Phil Corso's like what he said before he died. He was a uh, like, you know, he was an investigator on the Warren Commission. He, in World War II, he was hunting Nazis in Europe. Uh, he was an advisor all the way up to, to every president, all the way up through Reagan. Mm-hmm. Um, and he came out and basically talked about Roswell. And he wrote a book. It was called The Day After Roswell. It's, mm-hmm. like, phenomenal. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, I believe, you know, I, I've, I've talked to his son. Mm-hmm. He's a friend of a friend. And uh, his son's still alive. He died a few years ago. But they basically, you know, he came out with this stuff. And they pretty much dragged his name through the mud. And, like, kind of ruined his reputation and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, it got, like, you know, he was talking about how they would leak these... Uh, they would, To reverse engineer stuff, they would leak it to, you know, corporations and stuff. To include it in aircraft and things like that. You know, it was like computer chips, fiber optics, all this stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, which would make sense, you know. And uh, that's what this guy was saying, I guess, and that's what Bob Lazar said too. So I mean, it, it kind of jives with what I think, um, mm-hmm. whether this guy is telling the truth or not. I mean, I don't know. And that's another thing too. Yeah, like, they could have been doing a psyop on him. 
to test to tr- test him because he didn't see any of this stuff. Yeah. He just saw a document. And Bob, one of the things Bob Lazar was talking about that he would see documents and basically like he didn't know if they were true or not mm-hmm. because he thought that they were testing him by like giving documents to him or giving him access yeah. to things that weren't true so <clears throat> that if he tried to leak something or whatever. So that's why like there's certain information that he would give out and he'd be like, I don't know if this is true. I saw it in a document. And some of the documents that I had access to, I know the stuff wasn't true. Yeah. So you never really know. But, I mean, I just think, like, with the amount of UAPs they've seen, like the military aircraft, you know, like, uh, they've seen these things move in ways that we've yeah. never seen anything move before like that. You know, these are, like, Air Force pilots. Spheres. Pilots. There's spheres flying through yeah. at supersonic. Right. They could go from zero to whatever, you know, un- unheard of technology yep. and I understand how you know that could be frightening but um, you know it's a power struggle and I could understand why some people would want to hide that from you know and it's not so much that Americans would be like oh my god run for the hills no nah, it's, it's more like to cl- to try to figure out how to control it Try to figure out what it is so need, that somebody else doesn't get the technology and use it against us. Do you think that's what they're doing? They're yeah. Kind of slow rolling oh, yeah. it out to get us used well, to Well, that's it. the job so of every they're, government they're, is, yeah. is to control power, to consolidate power, and to, to dominate, right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's their job. They're doing. I think they're doing their job. Yeah. Yeah. So. Brilliant. All right. Let's, uh, new topic. Let's stab the pirate. Da da dee da da. Stabbing the pirates. Jeez, I can't get one. I want one. You're trying to get that shot, huh? Hey. You're trying to drink that shot. I want it. All right. So this was something we had talked about on on episode one. Okay. We had talked about uh, eating strange, weird bugs oh, yeah. and different things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I I saw this article uh, and it piqued my interest. And I was thinking, like, I was going to challenge you, because, uh, so it said here, uh, there's a, at the Ramen Boy Noodle Bar in Taipei, Mm. there's a new uh, ramen, uh, which is like a noodle type soup thing, it's real popular in Japan, uh, where they eat um, isopods, giant isopods, it's a 14 legged deep sea creature. Whoa, look at that thing. Yeah. Dude, put that on the screen. I will, I will. Terrible. So I'll, I'll put a picture of this in uh, so you guys can check it out. Speaking but, of aliens. But yeah, it looks like the thing that go an alien that goes on the uh-huh. person's face. Yeah. <laughs> and like sucks like the life out of them or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, so first off, I was going to ask, what you think about it? Number one. Number two, because uh, you're leaving soon. Yeah. And we have a, but we have a few months to plan. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about doing something before you go. We should fly to, for a weekend, mm-hmm. go to Taiwan and eat that shit, and film so it's it. in it's in Taiwan. All right, um, okay. it's like a thirty minute flight. Yeah, you know, I don't know yeah. if I want to eat that, bro. And I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna keep it real. I don't know if the if they can, if you're gonna put this on the screen. I will. I will. But like, I mean, do you? All right, I want to eat it. I don't want to eat it. It's I don't want to so eat that, bro. weird that I, I feel like I have. So to. check this out. You I was on. If, if it was just, not, if it was a bowl full of to. worms, like mealworms, I'd be like. No, I'm not eating that. It's I've not eaten, weird I've, enough. That okay, is so one when, of the weirdest things. So I've when I was on the USS life. Essex, we I pulled into Po Yang and we went to we went out into this Korea town and they served us a bowl of mealworms, cold mealworms. That's what you talked about. And yeah. me and my shipmate, yeah. we were like, "Hey, we both got to eat one." We ate. We ate it. We washed it down with some cold Sapporo because we had to because it tasted like earth. Like yeah. fried, where they no, it was cold. It was cold, wet. Mealworms. That is awful. And we were the only English speaking people in that at Korean in restaurant. Thailand, they, at least in Thailand, they yeah. fry them up so they're crunchy. Like, <laughs> I yeah, in Singapore, they yeah, fry I them up. But uh, those were bad, but I think, I think I'll pass on that. Okay, well, how about this? <laughs> you will you I mean? come with me and film me while I eat it? Dude, I, of course I will. All right, let's do it. And then we're, we'll go drink Cobra Blood. Nah. Oh, come on, I'm doing it. Come on, man. In, in Taiwan? You gotta give me something, yeah. All right, let me look into it. Let okay. me look it up, so I, I and then I'll story, get back with I wrote you. A... see you sneaking that. I'll cut that out. Um, I wrote a story about drinking cobra blood, 
uh, oh, yeah. in the newspaper um, in Taiwan. There's a place called Huashi Night Market, uh-huh. and it's, wow. it's it's right by Longshan Temple. Mm-hmm. And if you go, there's a place called Snake Alley, mm-hmm. and you go back there, and there's all these places where they have the fucking kill a cobra right in front of you, mm-hmm. and you they drip the blood into a pitcher, and then they pour you shot, and then you you like so. You, you do a series of shots. You do, like, uh, I think one is, like, Cobra Bile. One is, like, Cobra Venom. But I think it's, like, watered down. has to be. Like, they're not going to, like, give you straight venom. But, uh, and then the end, you do the Cobra Blood, and then you eat so Cobra. What, so what happens, Then bro? you eat Cobra Soup. Uh, uh, you feel, it's kind of like Habusaki. Uh-huh. You feel, like, su- super ganky. Like, you are ready, to, like, you're just uh-huh. you're ready for it. You're like it gets you all amped up and warm and crazed. It's crazy, bro. Yeah, I, I, I feel so like I, I did it by accident one night. Mm-hmm. I was there mm-hmm. and I was I was looking for it, and I I like was like Cobra. Like, do you know where this is? Like Cobra, and they're like, please sit down. And I'm like sitting down. And all of a sudden, it's all in front of me, and I'm like, you're like, oh, shit. Oh, you're like, oh, I got to do it now. I'm committed. Right. So I did it, but then I wasn't sure that I'd done it right uh-huh. or it was the right thing. Yeah, yeah. So I was. Poking around the next night, mm. and I did it again. <laughs> Someone else was like, "Sit down here, have this." Yeah, you. Like, Damn it! They saw you. They said, "We know what this American yeah, wants." Yeah, so I did it twice. It's, they don't uh, even do it themselves. They're like, "Yeah, give it yeah, to them." It was crazy, but I think uh, you basically went to their version of like Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they said they pulled so you in. I want to eat that weird thing and then go drink Cobra blood. You know what Cobra blood tastes like? Like blood, blood, like blood. Well, they, they put it in a pitcher with ice and then pour your shot, so it's a little bit watered down. I know what blood tastes like. I've so, so mine, t- <laughs> it t- no, it tasted like watered down. I had the ex- tastes you know like I mean? watered down Kool Aid. Nah, bro. Yeah, you got you got scammed. No way. You got scammed. They gave you watered down Kool Aid. No, and not like sweet, but just that like kind of flavor. Not sweet though. It wasn't sweet. But it just, Welcome to Vampire. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's kind of like the chemical yeah, 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 yeah. Like salty. Right, yeah, right. I got you. Yeah. Not that I know anything about blood. I mean, like, I feel like I should. We've right. all taken a wound and been like, oh, I need to stop the bleeding. Yeah. I'm in the ju- I need out here in the wild. Right. I need to stop. That's why I know yeah. blood. No, no one's judging you. Don't worry. Yeah. He said, clearly in the video. You, they might judge you for not taking that shot. Clearly, they won't judge you. For clearly it. in the video in 2023, <laughs> he said that he knows what blood tastes like, end quote. What the hell? Come on, man. <laughs> it's it's not. He's dude, giving me a hard you, time. You, you want to win. If you want to take the shot, take the shot. Yeah, it's I think I might just do that. Right, let's do it. Let's take the shot together. I say take a shot and keep on talking. Yeah, and then we keep firing. Like Cheers. Yep. Wait, wait for Rena. You want to <clears> take a shot too? Is the camera on still? Can you see from the back? Uh, oh, shit. That's cool. Man, nah. I got a battery hey, here. Yeah, but this one's still going. Yeah, but let me uh, let me change the battery because it, it may have just recently turned off. Mm-hmm. Cool. I, I've been wanting to jump in here. Yeah, we're 30 minutes in, so it'll probably just shut off. Only 30. What's that? Only 30. Yep. Well, looks like it's been longer than that, right? Yeah, a lot of good topics. And recording going. Indeed. So, yeah, so I'm going to go eat this strange, weird isopod, giant isopod. Um, Yeah, and I want you to come watch, and then we'll drink snake blood. Okay, so let's talk about the details, the ins and outs of that. Yeah, we will. We'll do it before you go. Are you having a shot with us? We can fly over. Can I join you? Indeed, Rena. Thank you for having us, hosting us, our podcast. Kampai. Kampai. Thank you. Curry in Okinawa. Mm. <laughs> Yo! Woo! Oh, I love me some rum. Oh, that vanilla. I love you know it. what? It's very smooth. Like, it is. There's a whole lot of oh. things you could drink that make you go, uh. That, one, that's actually real good. There's one thing I, I really... If I could go back in time... Would be anything I wanted. You know what I would probably do? Uh, let me guess. I'd go back and be a pirate. Dude, I was about to say that. Why did you take... I was going to kill that. I was going to say that. 
Because, like, <laughs> I've been obsessed with pirates my whole life. Uh, like, I've written screenplays about them. Who I've, doesn't want to be a pirate? I have Blackbeard's flag I mean, hanging in my office. Like, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm obsessed with pirates. Like, I've read all, every book you... I, dude, I read the, the Which, pirate trials. Like the. That's why you like rum so much. I do like rum. Yeah, I got a, a black beard. Yeah, it's an unhealthy, unhealthy desire and craving for the rum. The sweet, sweet rum. That's I why... Take, I want to be a pirate. I tell you one thing, man. You I like are. I like me some Bombay every now and then. I got a I like a bottle of Bombay. Indeed, absolutely. Indeed. All right. So what we got next, bro? What's up the next? Next thing I wanted to talk about, and Wayne, you can chime in on this, and maybe Rena knows something about this as well. So there's a thing called hikomori in Japan, and it's uh, it's a it's a movement of people mm. who have withdrawn from society, leading reclusive lives largely confined within the walls of their home. And apparently uh, <clears throat> it's it's growing. There was a survey done in November and uh, it's growing. Um, it's, it's Henry Thoreau but metropolized. Right. And, you know, they shut in, they play video games, they don't work. Uh, there's an estimated 1.46 million social recluses in Japan. Um... So basically, I wanted to bring it up because I gotta say, it sounds awesome. <laughs> I kind of want to do it. I yeah, I mean, I've made I myself that. pretty clear over the years to people who know me that uh, yeah. although I, I you know I do enjoy going out in public and doing certain coming here and doing certain things here and there. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of society or people. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm just you're, not. You're a mis- As, misanthrope? No, like I have friends and stuff, and I like my. I love my friends and my mm-hmm. family, but I just feel like, you know, like maybe it's because I come from Boston and people are rude or whatever, but I just like, there's always something when you deal with like, you know, I, I think I told you this story. Last year when I went home, my buddy got box seats to a Red Sox game at Fenway Park, and we went. And they got crushed by the Astros. It wasn't even a game. but So we're leaving, and two dudes just picked a fight with us like randomly for no reason whatsoever. They're like, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Like It's like, bro, I, nothing. I was just watching. Were they that. Astro fans? No, they were Red Sox fans. <laughs> and you guys are Red Sox <laughs> yes, fans. Yes, and we're wearing Red Sox stuff, and so are they. Mm-hmm. So, and they they're like, just like wanted to fight us for no reason whatsoever. So like, And I found that's Sounds how, like the West. Well, that's how people are. So well, that's why I'm well, not a big fan of people. When, when it comes to sports, yeah. people can be very... That's true. But I, they can be that way about other Retarded. things. Politics, politics, anything. Like, mm. So I just am not a big fan of humans. Bro, but some, some, dudes, humans. Just, some dudes just want to fight, man. Yeah, but so what I'm saying is there's some very attractive aspects of this lifestyle. You get to play video games all day. You don't have to work. <clears throat> and we know, and we know that in this, we, we and we know that in right this there. new virtual virtual reality is so. So if this virtual if this insanity. is growing, also the virtual reality virtual thing is growing. You've got Apple, you've got Amazon, you got Facebook. Everybody's in on it. Right. You know, uh, Apple just released their brand new VR set that's supposed to be amazing. Plus, you've got you've got tokenized and incentivized gaming where you can now make money more than ever gaming I need and then when you want to cash out you can sell your nfts and move on to the next game so um maybe the end maybe people saw this coming yeah. as it's it's actually growing and that's why we're getting into this new way of living life yeah. for me it's not for me i need to get out i need to see the sunshine i need to interact with people i like I staying do, I home do, I do too. i'm kind of a homebody i like to stay home <clears throat> i like to relax but at the same time, I mean, during COVID, COVID was like a test pilot for everybody. Right. I mean, I worked from home. I mean, every day yeah. was like Groundhog's Day. I don't even right. remember the f- eight months that were there. Right. I didn't like it. It wasn't good for my health. Right. Uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, so, like, for but, me, you know, like I my, need human interaction. My dream, and I, we've talked about this, like, is to work from home. No, no. I mean, my goal from all the invest in, investing that I do, oh, yeah. and all the, my, my end game. Your I'm goal a, is to work from home. No, it's well work on stuff for me. Yeah, it's from saying. Like I want to have a cabin in the middle of the woods, go hunting, and just yeah. live. Write books. A more real life, like exactly. more 
like back to the basics hunting yeah I, like I don't want to kill things but like if you want meat you got to do it yeah you, gotta, you know that's mm-hmm. what I want I want a more I want to know where my food come from comes from I want to live off the land mm-hmm. so like that's my dream so in a way it's kind of similar <laughs> it's kind of mm-hmm. you know so like I wouldn't stay isolated all the time mm-hmm. but and I'm, I'm kind of joking when I talk like oh I don't like people but you know it's like there is a little bit of truth to that and there is a little bit of truth that this I read this and I'm like god damn you brilliant bastards like this is like nah, I mean, but, here's, it. but, but I, I think I would need a patron though because how are you gonna if you shut yourself in for two years and you don't work how are you gonna pay the rent but see, see I would the, need someone who's who's a fan of bald tubby gentlemen who could like uh, support me yeah I mean I don't know I don't know if we're doing enough due diligence on this topic because I know that some of it is people Depression. they're able to leverage technology to where they can stay home and do those sort of right. things but it's also you know there's something going I was watching uh, so I did I did some a uh, couple of YouTube videos on this before we, we came out today and yeah. you know it's uh, an increasing amount of people dying in their homes both like yeah. young people and older people and it's like people shutting themselves off so um there's something there that needs to be looked at. Um, like I said, I don't want to go too far into it because like, I just don't want to make things up. But I don't think it's healthy. No, make overall. things up. <laughs> I, just, I don't think it's healthy. So Yeah, it's definitely not healthy. But like yeah. sometimes unhealthy shit is attractive. You know, like why the, what, that's why people eat fast food. And that's why people drink too much. You know, yeah. like, sometimes unhealthy behaviors are attractive. And I'm just saying... There's a lot of this that I find very attractive. You know what I think it is? You know what I think the commonality is? Technology. The availability of technology. So before we came over, I was watching a video on the same topic. Yeah. Young Japanese girl, probably mid-20s. She's yeah. like, I just don't have the... She lives in one of those Tokyo... Yeah, like, you mentioned that. It's like a capsule um, it's hotel. It's like a capsule hotel. Yeah. She's, like, she's laying on the bed. and She's like, I just don't have... They're translating. She's like, I don't have the energy to go out. And relationships are too... Uh, quote difficult and you have to put time in to make them work I'm like what and she's like laying there and she's like I have fake you know they have fake relationships online where they know people online I think I think it's technology yeah I think technology has cracked the code of human beings is making us lazy and like I saw a video on Vice about, you know uh, like I, sex dolls people yeah. like like it's people thing. get these dolls that they interviewed like uh, he was Japanese actually but he lived in America mm-hmm. but he was blind Mm. And he had a sex doll that, like, basically... He's blind, wow. Yeah, and he, uh, you know, I, I don't remember if it talked or not, but it basically, like, he would dress it, and there were different, like, facial expressions you could put on it, different... You could accessorize it, basically. You know why And that was his girlfriend. You know why Like, guess. legit, that was... And he was, like, adamant about it and how great it was. This, this is why you get a sex doll, because she won't talk back to you. Uh, right. God, you're getting a little cheeky over there, God. <laughs> that doesn't sound like something God would say. I mean, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> God has traded in his values. <laughs> trade for trade. Yep, yep. So, this was something that I... Yeah. We'll change topics. This was something that I wanted to talk about. Alright. Yeah. yeah, so... I don't know if you guys have heard about this, but uh, apparently there's been a phenomenon mm-hmm. of. How can I well, read it? I don't know. There's a phenomenon recently where orcas have been attacking boats. Have you heard of this? Mm-mm. So there's been numerous <clears throat> uh, different stories. I'm distracted by you guys whispering. Um, there's been numerous. We're, like no, we're talking. We're talking about the news. Whisper no, there's been numerous girls. accounts uh-huh. of orcas, like pods of orcas, attacking yachts, attacking boats. Mm-hmm. And last week there was a video that was released. Hang on, real quick. What's an orca? Just orca, real. like killer whale. Okay, yeah. Sorry. So, Duh. so Duh. they've been you're, attacking you're, boats. You're thinking about okra, like the food. <laughs> you're hungry. Oh. So <laughs> Uber well, Eats. Let's well, go. So there was a video released last week of a yacht. That was sailing somewhere. I forget where it was. But a pod of orcas attacks the boat. One of them swims up. And this is caught on video. 
and rips the rudder off the boat and carries it away. That's and so then they're crazy. hitting the boat, trying to sink it, and all this stuff. And there's numerous accounts of this happening. Like, this has been happening all over the place. Is it a new thing? Is it a new... Uh, it's happened in the past, but it, it's like the frequency is picking up. Mm. And then today I saw this article. That's weird. Uh, they were filming, um, I think it's like Planet Earth 2. Our Planet 2. It's a... Uh, with British biologist David Attenborough, mm. and they were filming it for Netflix. Mm. And so they went out in these, like, rubber, like, you know, like how the military <laughs> uses those rubber boats. Rubber rubber, <clears throat> rubber raider rafts? Yeah. So they went out in those in, uh, from an uh, uninhabited, I think, island in Hawaii. And they were, like, 100 feet offshore, and they got attacked by two 15-foot tiger sharks that jumped out of the water and, like, bit the boat and, like, punctured it, and they started to sink, and they somehow made it back to shore. Were they moving at a fast pace? I mean, no, I don't know. No, they weren't. They were just, like, mm. rowing along. Like, mm. they were trying to get footage of the tiger sharks, mm. but they before they could shoot anything, they got attacked, and they just barely made it back with their lives. That's and crazy, bro. So they interviewed the, the one of the cameramen, and he said this. He said, this V of water came streaming towards us, and this tiger shark leapt at the boat and bit huge holes in it. The whole boat exploded. We were trying to get it away and it wasn't having any of it. It was horrific. That was the second shark that day to attack us. And separate then, Two and, separate events. And then they start talking about the orcas. And what he said, he said that it's possible, you know, because these guys are out in nature filming, you know, stuff like this all the time. And he believes that, I mean, he said that they looked ravenous. And it's not normal. So he thinks what he what this guy was saying, they believe that maybe there's not enough food. Yeah. Like the food population's di- diminishing. Yeah. That's why they're getting more aggressive with boats and people. Mm. But I just wanted to ask your opinion on it because I think there was a friggin' M. Night Shyamalan movie where like nature basically rebels and tries to kill humans. Yeah, so and as as you're telling the story, yeah. that's that was exactly my narrative in my head. Yeah. That's what I was thinking too. But I mean scientifically, let's let's say that they're hungry. That there's they're not getting the food that they want. That's it. Yeah. But uh what's the orcas? What's their story? What's the deal with that? I don't think they eat people. Uh, so the orcas attacked people. Maybe it could be food as well too, like not enough food. It or could maybe be just like you guys polluted the you ocean. You know, you know what it could You're be. Here's a fish. wrench. Yeah, and so and so there's that narrative too, and possibly so. Yeah, I mean, why not? If you're attacking someone's home and it's getting and it's actually growing, why not attack? I mean, they're intelligent beings. They're very intelligent. Yeah. Or it could be the frequency of technology, cameras, journalists going out and capturing more of this. So it makes it seem like it's more frequent. Yeah. I don't know. One of my favorite books is uh, obviously Moby Dick. It, mm. Part of it was written. Obviously. Part of it was written, of course. <laughs> was written in Cape Cod, where I'm from. Yeah. And it was based on a true story. It was There was a whale ship Essex that left out of Nantucket, which is also where I'm from, Cape Cod, Mass. Mm. Um, and it's a very famous story. Uh, so basically, the, one guy survived. Okay. From this whale ship. Mm-hmm. And basically the story he told was, and I read his book, he, it was very short, but he, he wrote down what happened. And what happened was they were off Nantucket, they were, they were harpooning whales, killing whales. Mm. All of a sudden this white whale appears and attacks the boat and sinks the boat. And that's the story of Moby Dick. And uh, so basically him and a couple of dudes get in a life raft they're at sea for a long period of time. Um, and basically, he's the only one that survived. They, they started eating each other. Uh, like, someone would die, and they would eat the body. And Boy. so when he came back, there was, like, a stigma around him because he had eaten his friends. Mm-hmm. And so people wouldn't go near him. They were like, they were like he was ostracized, basically, from the community. Mm. Uh, but he wrote this book, and that's where Moby Dick comes from. It's from that story. It was a true story. Mm. But so there is uh, a history of these creatures attacking humans, yeah, um, especially boats. But uh, yeah, it, I just think it's interesting. I wonder what have we done to deserve this? These menacing orcas, dude. We live in a we live in a crazy world right yeah. now. I mean, like the eighties and the nineties were legit, but now there's just so much going on. Mm. I don't know. It kind of makes you want to move to Mauritius. 
I kind of want to move to Mauritius, and also uh, I want to just say one thing. Go, um, go on here, go say it. I think octopuses are from alien. Oh, absolutely. I think they're from outer space. But but you know what? We eat those aliens. That a, that alien that you showed on the screen a minute yeah. ago. I love Bro, those I don't want to eat that. Back to aliens. Let's, let's find something else for you to do. <laughs> what? You don't have to eat that. I'm definitely eating that. But why? Why do you want to eat it? Because it's so weird. I have to. All right. You don't want to see me eat that thing? No, I'm not saying I, I'll eat I the want whole to see thing. you like. I might eat a bite of it. But I want to see you make a, a million dollars in crypto. That's what I want to see. I'm you definitely going to do that. I want to see you buy. Um, oh, I got a stock. I got a crypto. I want to talk to you about okay. a new one. Yeah. <laughs> How would I get it again? That's two you for got me. It again, yeah. And I wanted it. I wonder how this thing works. So you gotta take everything out. Yeah, we really ran the gamut on that one. Yeah. Dude, 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 you're like, you could do this for a living at bars. You're like super efficient. <laughs> I am the pirate king. We are. So yeah, one thing I did want to ask you too, because we always talk about uh, crypto and the economy and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I had a big week, as you know. I. I bought a lot of uh, yes, you did Polygon Matic. I bought a lot of mm. Ada uh, because they were good prices. Basically, um, labeled as being uh, securities by uh, the SEC, mm-hmm. and uh, I think it was the XRP, the Ripple lawsuit. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, they were. And they, they, the government <clears throat> didn't go after them; hasn't sued them or anything like that, or pressed charges. But that I think they were labeled in a filing by the government by the SEC, so their price is tanked. Yeah, and so I jumped right in and bought them. Yes, <clears throat> smart um, man, good buy the dip. Yeah, I also bought some Gala and and you know Benjamin Cowan, the cryptoverse guy. Like he had a video today, like he was showing uh, it was on Ada, and he was showing like Bitcoin dominance and kind of the cycles and everything. And basically, he made the case that Cardano could drop another fifty percent. Which would bring it to like thirteen to fifteen cents a token. And we're I at it, we're at like thirty, forty cents, thirty four, thirty. I bought it cents. at like twenty five, I think. Yeah. But to me, that was a good price, even if it goes down. No, like he said twenty five is amazing. Yeah, but I, I still long term. I, I yeah, I had a good week. I bought ADA, some ADA, 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 yeah, ADA dot uh, tag USD. Yep. So. I bought some quant, some H bar. Yeah, you did some buy some Gala. quant. You did buy some yeah, quant. Yeah. You got me beat. Yeah. You got me beat on quant. Mm. You don't have me beat on Gala or Jasmine. Yeah. That Jasmine. I'll be buying more of that stuff soon because mm. I, I still do think we're going to see prices go down. Yeah. But. So so quant is now a dollar oh nine as of today, and I was wow. kind of like shoot, but like, yeah, you know, I kind of have this feeling that we're going to go a little bit lower, and I, I think do. I still think yeah. it's going to be in September. Yeah. I mean, I don't I have a, right. I don't have a I just wait. And those magic ball, good, yeah. but I believe that it's going to be. I have this, I have this feeling about September two thousand twenty-three. Yeah, and I feel like that might be. I feel like that might be the low, mm. but you know, here's the thing: uh, twenty two thousand twenty-four in what well, doesn't the markets in general, yeah. crypto stocks, whatever. It's going to be very volatile, just as it was in 2016, leading yeah. up to the presidential election. Cowan it's going was to be very volatile. To the last dip. it's going to be very schizophrenic. But when yeah. we're out, when once we get past November 8th, 2024, yeah. we're going to be on to the races. That's yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, um, but I just thought it was you know because I'm like been waiting so long and I'm getting antsy and I'm kind of yeah you want to wanna, get in. you want to buy now and move on but right. you know you have you were going through this time process it's but very Cowan, Cowan said today he goes, if you if you overlay the last uh, the last recession you know bear cycle you overlay it on what's going on now he mm-hmm. said this could continue for the next five months what exactly the break the like, breakdown like based things keep going lower for the next five months let's do it i mean yeah I'm, i'd love that. i mean yeah. you but know i just it puts it in perspective you know that like if, if this was the last cycle which we still might have five more months of it i mean it just feels like because we've been watching it so closely it feels yeah. like it's taken forever but yeah i did get in on some because the prices were good just for historical purposes right now 
uh, the price of Bitcoin is twenty six thousand four hundred dollars as of today. So not good enough for but me. But if we're watching this in ten years, <laughs> I don't know how. Hey, we we need two shots. Yar. We need two hey, shots. Hey, what's up? Can you hook us up, dude? Yeah. You want to end this? Like I gotta take a leak. What, what's up? I gotta take a leak. Okay, so. you gotta go. Yeah. All right. Well. Um, so yeah. So it's been an hour. It's. Uh, my birthday, so we'll be doing a little bit more. Happy celebrity. birthday, bro! Birthday. Yeah, we're gonna do. Uh, some, we might do some eating too. <coughs> indeed, might grab indeed. some good grub. Right on, right on. Um, Happy yeah. birthday to you, man! Forty-one years Cheers, old, brother. Thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah, forty-one years. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. It's a little bit, you know. Feel good I, about it, bro. Feel good about it. I don't be, don't be so negative. Mortality. You're good. Yeah. You're good. But yeah, so that was a good podcast. We touched on a lot of topics. Um, yeah. Played the pirate game. I feel it was a good podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talked about the market. Are you? Is there anything you you said you were going to talk about a crypto? Is there anything you're buying? Um, briefly. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I don't have a, I don't have a lot of information. Well, I mean, I, we'll, we'll save it for another one. Okay. Let's, uh, let's, one thing let's do a crypto want, deep dive. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing I, I did want to say, you know, I, I was pretty excited because I did just buy a bunch of Cardano. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of Cardano, even though there's a lot of fun. As am I. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of fun. But one thing I did see today that I thought was amazing, there was a, uh, a video by Crypto Banter. Uh, shout out to them. It was pretty good. They had the, the head of... Dega. Um, mm. On. Let me just check real quick. Make sure. Um, if you got to take a leak, you can go, bro. Uh, but yeah, it was. I wanted. To, are we gonna close it out? I think I just deleted it. But yeah, it was called Dega. And basically, what it is is he's building Web three infrastructure on Cardano, mm-hmm. so that people that want to make games mm-hmm. like gaming, <clears throat> they can just basically almost like templates plug right in, so that it makes it easier to build stuff on Cardano. And I think that is going to really drive a lot more adoption a mm-hmm. lot more usage okay and uh you know because basically it's it's a twofold thing they're going to make it easier for game for people who want to build games, build games and also the gamers themselves so that they don't even know really that they're using they don't have to learn about blockchains they don't have to learn about yeah. anything and i just think that's awesome so i don't know too much about it uh-huh. but uh they're going to be doing a, i think like an airdrop soon you have to stake tokens with them for a few months and then you get an airdrop i think but basically, it sounds very promising, so I thought that was cool. Uh, and their website, I think, is Dega. dot org. org. Um, I'll let's check, out let's check it out, man. Let's check it out. <clears throat> yeah, yeah I want to look into that. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a fan of Ada, as is as most people are. Yeah, so yeah, indeed. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let's do wrap it, man. it up. Let's well, ra- wrap it uh, up. Thank you for watching, and uh, you know, if if you'd like to donate, fifty four forty six dot wallet, you can send Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, Matic and Cardano, actually, and uh, and yeah, right, tight, super tight. Jesus. Cheers. Dega.